we had started looking at the basics of edited learning. Uh, as I said, this course is largely about distributed optimization. So we won't go too deep into uh, edited learning, but this is some, this is an upcoming area. In fact, already gained a lot of attraction and attend, uh, and then, so we, we basically want to understand the basics of edited learning. So if just to briefly recap uh, what federated learning was. So this is the kind of setup that we have and this is essentially about taking the computation to the edge devices, right? So you have maybe a central server and let's say you have plenty of edge devices. Okay, and the way this works is, so this central server is going to have a few rounds of communication with these edge devices and these edge devices are, let's say if we are trying to train a neural network, right? So what this central server would do is in, in some round T, in some communication round T, it would basically broadcast its weight XT to these edge devices. So. So this XT is broadcasted. Now these edge devices are equipped with their own data samples, right? So let's say this has N1 data points, N2 data points, N3, NK data points. And, and what do these edge devices do with these weights? So what happens uh, once the central server uh, communicates the XTs? So it, it, it basically runs few local updates, right? So every edge device, so every edge device makes few local updates. And we say that these local updates are going to be tau sub i for the ith edge device. So it, it's going to run tau sub i number of local updates. And the way this works is, Essentially, you, we are going to be defining something called xi t plus 1 or let's call it x, x or rather let's call it xt instead of this xt j essentially implies. So you have the ith edge device or ith client. and j is an index from 0 to tau i minus 1, okay. So xt, so what is xt j 0 or x, sorry, xt 0, this is same as xt that has been communicated by the central server. And then on a mini batch, we make an update which is going to be xt j i is going to be xt j minus 1 i minus uh, some step size times you take the gradient evaluated at xt j minus 1 and the data points that have been uh, data points in that mini batch okay so this is how we update and this update runs for uh, from 0 through tau i minus 1, right? So essentially, I mean, j goes from 0 to tau i minus 1. So if, if I, let us say, I even write j plus 1 here, so this becomes, this essentially becomes j, okay? And j is an index, uh, a number in this set, right? So this is how uh, every agent is, up or every client is updating these XTJs and then what happens is these clients are then going to communicate back to the central server XTI tau i tau sub i right. So in this case XT1 uh, tau 1, XT2 tau 2. So all these informations are going to be communicated back to the central server and the central server then basically computes xt plus 1 
0 or let's say x for now let's assume let's call it x t plus 1 using so weighted i equal 1 if there are m agents involved or let's say m clients involved so p sub i x i t tau i okay and then this information is then communicated back to these clients and then it this this keeps on going for capital T communication rounds. Is this clear? So, how do we choose this P, P sub i? So, P sub i is the relative weight applied to a particular uh, agent and how do we choose that? Yeah, so usually depending on the number of data points, so if there are n sub i data points, so P i is usually n i divided by total number of data points. This is how, this is typically how we choose uh, these weights P sub i, okay. So, in the last class we looked at the effect of certain, uh, so the parameters or uh, essentially that govern the overall federated learning framework is that let us say the number of local updates that you run, right. So, should we run too many local updates or too few local updates? So, what, 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 what is the effect if we run let us say too few local updates? in terms of the error convergence. Is it going, going to take longer to converge? If we run uh, take few very few local updates, is it going to take longer to converge? Right? So, so ideally we should run a lot of local updates, but if we run lot of lo local updates what are what, what ends up happening? average of the individual opt optimal solutions right and that is something also not desired right. So, that is one thing. The other thing is about the batch size. If the batch size is large, do we have more updates or fewer updates? Fewer updates right. If the batch size is large then we have fewer updates. So, again larger batch size means it would take a it would take uh, multiple communication rounds, lot more communication rounds for you for the algorithm to converge right. So, all these parameters they have a role to play. So, today we are going to look at uh, sources of computational heterogeneity in federated learning, uh, the effect of uh, how like basically updates, a generalized update rule for the fed, uh, something called generalized update rule, rule for federated learning. Then we would look at something called fed nova algorithm. So, fed aver average is what we have looked at so far. We would look at something called fed nova algorithm. We would also look at uh, fairness in because every agent has, has gotten their own data points. So, how do we account amount basically account for fairness in federated learning. So, that is uh, what are the measures for fed, uh, fairness. So, so these would be the topics of discussion in today's lecture, ok. So, sources of computational heterogeneity in federated learning. So, again consider the same setup, we have a central server, and we have uh, multiple clients, Okay. So, there is information exchange between the server and the clients that way. So, what are the possible sources of computational heterogeneity that you can think across these clients? So, let us say this particular uh, this particular client has got n 1 data points, n 2 data points, n 3 data points, n 4 data uh, n k data points right. Suppose this is a setup, and it's also assume that n one is greater than n two, and so on, n k. So, what do you think would happen if, uh, let's say, we use uh, a fixed number of tau? So, tau is the total number of uh, local updates. Which is kept fixed. Okay. So, let's say tau i is the total number of local updates right. So, what is the formula for tau sub i? 
a times n i over b right. So, one source that can you think of a potential source of computational heterogeneity? So, if n 1 is let us say more than n 2 for the same batch size and for the same number of uh, uh, local epochs capital E, you would have a larger tau 1 right compared to tau 2. So, that means, so if if E and B are if E and B are kept fixed, across clients then in this case we have tau 1 more than tau 2. So, we would have more local updates here then uh, and fewer local updates here right. So, that means the x that it is going to converge to is going to be dependent more on these set of points of this particular client then maybe this client over here right. So, this the client with larger number of data points would have sig uh, significantly more bearing on the overall performance than a client with fewer data points like this. So, this this is one source of computational heterogeneity which is also going to be large right. But then just as I said forget about the weight part the total number of local updates also uh, is related to the error convergence and other things right. So, if I have more data points here that means, I am performing more local updates here then then so essentially you have significantly more local updates happening here then maybe in this case right you have fewer local updates and this would decrease across as you uh, move towards the right right. So, fewer and fewer local updates are happening. So, of may the initial few set of clients they would have larger say over the others I mean over the uh, entire learning process right. Is this clear? So, that is one source of computational heterogeneity. So, this is a source of computational heterogeneity. So, how can we uh, avoid this? How can we avoid potentially avoid this particular uh, source or basically how can we eliminate the effect of uh, larger number of data points resulting in larger number of local updates how can we fix this having different ENVs essentially you fix your tau. So, make sure that the tau is consistent across uh, all agents right. So, that is one way you can potentially avoid this kind of uh, computational heterogeneity that is one thing. But uh, what about if we let us say have if we dedicate a fixed amount of time like a processing time as in fixed amount of processing time. So, if we dedicate a fixed amount of processing time to individual clients then the number of local updates. So, then what then what hap what do you think hap uh, would happen? So, essentially we can have only capital T number of uh, maybe capital T is the total time that each client can uh, uh, sort of uh, spend on performing local updates. So, what do you think would happen in that case? Yeah. So, this yeah. So, if they, there are slower clients, so if there are slower cl clients then slower clients uh, would make fewer updates then then the clients which are faster right. Because if you fix the total computation time then then that is what. So, that is another source of uh, computational heterogeneity. So, if we fix uh, let us say tau across clients then slow clients will take much longer to finish right. No, I am mean, no, saying that there if let us say you fix tau, if you fix the number of local updates that you are going to be making then slow clients would take much uh, longer to finish. And so, on top of it if you fix the computational time then you would not be done with as many updates right to finish their updates. And if that is the case 
then what what is the consequence of this particular thing then uh, the central server would have to wait for a certain time before it can like make the next update right or makes an initiate the next communication round so this is a bottleneck essentially so so bottlenecking each communication round So a quick way to fix this is that you allocate capital T times, basically your total computational budget. So quick way to, so this is called straggling by the way, and I mean these are stragglers. So if you want to eliminate the straggling effect, Straddling effect is to fix total computational budget with some capital T, okay, and allow clients to make as many updates as they can in, in that allotted time, in that allotted budget. As many updates as they can. Right? Now the, the downside of this effect is that the faster clients would make lot more updates than the slower clients, right? So however, will make more local updates and again this would have a similar effect as we saw in the context of uh, when we had different number of data points right. So the client with larger number of data points was making more updates, it's very similar situation here. The faster clients here will make more number of local updates in a in an allotted sort of uh, computational budget right. So this is another source of computational heterogeneity. So this is another source of this is also a source of computational heterogeneity. So besides these two sources, can you think of any other source of computational heterogeneity? If you look at this particular algorithm for instance. So let us say every agent starts using different learning rates or different hyperparameters, right? Maybe they are using a second order optimization algorithm like Adam or something else. So not just the step size, but maybe the momentum term is also going to be there. So now every, for the same gradient, like, I mean let us say uh, given the gradient, agents may be making uh, like let us say faster updates in the sense that they would be uh, moving too much in the direction of the gradient or maybe some, some particular client is using a very small step size. So even though it may be making a lot of uh, of local updates, it, it is not progressing too much towards uh, what it should have progressed to, right. So difference in the learning rates and difference in the hyperparameters is another source of computational heterogeneity. Is this clear? So you essentially have variation hyperparameters. such as learning rate and momentum, momentum is another source for source of computational heterogeneity. So why do we care about, uh, as I said, like why do we care about computational heterogeneity or other forms of heterogeneity in federated learning? Because we are really trying to uh, work with clients that are either computationally very different uh, in the in terms of compute power, in terms in in terms of the kind of data that they uh, that each client possesses. That is also that is also going to be highly variable, 
And so in presence of all these uh, uncertainties, what kind of guarantees can we provide is what we are trying to understand in today's lecture. So it's about, it's, a, it's essentially about uh, variation in, in the compute power, variation in the hyperparameters, variation in the total number of local updates and so on. And uh, can we still guarantee something meaningful in the federated learning framework, okay? So that is what we are trying to study.